What's up, guys? Michael here. There are many ways to see SWOT outputs. Spatial visualization shows the model results on a map. It will clearly show how the selected results are distributed across sub-basins and ridges. It's very useful to pinpoint the hot spots in the watershed. The example shown here is the sediment, year, uh, sediment yield of year 2000 in the watershed. It clearly shows that sub-basin uh, 8 and sub-basin 11 generates more sediment than other sub-basins. In this video, we will talk about how to do the spatial visualization with ArcSwot, QSwot, and SWOT Viewer. You will see how SWOT Viewer will save you time and space. We will use the example showing here. Uh, it has 25 sub-basins. The model has been sent up to run from year 1990 to 2000 and will generate the monthly result. We will try to show the sediment yield of year 2000 on the map with this three software. First, we will use ArcSwot. First, we will run, uh, uh, use the SWOT viewer to run the model. Uh, right now, I set up the model and run the model. And then I need to import the file, the output file into the database. So I go into the uh, database file and find the sub-basin folder, sub-basin table. And because we just want to year 2000 results, so I will do the filter for year 2000 and copy all the results and create the Excel file and copy all the year 2000 results into that Excel file. Because we only want sediment yield, so we just uh, remove other columns right now. Right now we will have sub-basin column, if we have sediment, so we will try to calculate, because right now it's a monthly result, right? we need to calculate uh, um, the year uh, average result for each of sub-basin. And then, right now, I copy uh, that and, and paste that into another table. The two columns give a name, sub-basin, sediment yield. And then I save this uh, file into my documents folder. I give a name called sed Excel file. Let's click save. So I import the file. Then I go back to ArcGIS. And then right now the ArcGIS, I have the sub-basin layer here, so I need to just uh, uh, link to uh, the Excel file I just created. So I first add the Excel file into that, the ArcGIS, and then I use the join function in ArcGIS and join this uh, uh, sub-basin and that Excel file. And then after drawing, I will have the sediment in my table and then go to the symbology. And then I will see that color, and so that's it. In, in the example, you can see, because uh, Axwell don't have uh, built-in uh, spatial visualization tools in the toolbox, so we need to uh, use other software to help us to do the spatial visualization. So in the example, we use first use the uh, SWOT editor to run the model, and then I need to, after I run the model, we need to import that uh, model result to a database using the SWOT editor function. Uh, after I export that uh, uh, the output into a database, I need to uh, use Excel and to copy the data from the database to the Excel. In the Excel, I will calculate the uh, average sediment yield for year 2000. After that, I need to go back to uh, ArcGIS and load it into in the sub basin layer and uh, and then draw in that sub basin layer and the the, the calculated uh, sub uh, sediment yield in the excel file then after that i can set up the symbology 
uh, to show uh, the subbasin with a different color based on the sediment yield I calculated. So you can see um, there will be uh, basically six steps you want to follow to get this spatial visualization done if you use AgSWOT. Um, and also you need to have three softwares. One is the SWOT editor. All these also can be you also can be using the AgSWOT, the toolbar. Uh, it will be the same. And the second one will be the Excel file. You need to have the Excel to uh, calculate that uh, uh, average value and uh, to be connected to the JS data. And the last one will be the ArcGIS software. If you're using ArcSwot, you will be having ArcGIS software. That's where you will uh, create that map colors for that each of the sub-basin. Um, also, um, uh, you will, in this process, you will generate two duplicate result files. First one is the imported database. This one is uh, generated based on the SWOT output files. Uh, basically, what, uh, what the data in this database will be exactly the same as the one in the result files. It's just in different formats. One is in text files, another one, this one is in the uh, access database. So it's duplicate result files, take you extra space. Um, and for monthly results, most time it's okay, but if you run daily, um, I mean, you will, it will take uh, a lot of space for you. Um, the second uh, duplicate result file will be the Excel file. Um, so the Excel file um, is to create, to connect to the JS and to be able to show uh, the different colors on the map. Uh, so you need to have the Excel file to, uh, to do that properly. Uh, in that process, I'm trying to do uh, the best I can. So, but it still take me like around two minutes to finish this process. Next, we will use QSWOT to do the spatial visualization. Same as in ArcSWOT. So we will first run the model, set up model using SWOT editor. Uh, so first, I will set up the time. Set up run and go into run the model. So model after the model run, I need to go back to SWOT editor and read the SWOT output. So right now I will uh, choose output sub and export uh, the result to the database. But you can see uh, I need to click several times to close that SWOT editor. So right now the visualize uh, manual is, um, can be uh, used. Right now I go into the visualization window. Um, so but you can see the menu here is um, a little bit crowded, but I will try to use that. <laughs> so I will try to uh, set up the year. So year will be 2000, 2000, and choose the variables, and choose the summation. And I will choose annual means, and create the model results. So that's it, and it's done right now. As you can see in the QSWOT, uh, it takes less time to do the process, but uh, if you really look into that, uh, you still have uh, need to do seven steps to uh, finish the spatial visualization. So first one, uh, you still need to do um, import to a database. So this will be the same as the one uh, in ArcSWOT. You need to use the SWOT um, uh, editor to run the model and uh, import uh, the output file into a database file. And then all other process will be, steps will be uh, in the uh, QSWOT. So basically we need uh, all this will be done in the visualization uh, window. First we need to choose the scenario and second we will go to choose the output table because sometimes you may have sub-basin table, sometimes you have the rich table. So this time, for this example, we will choose the sub SUB sub-basin table. And uh, next, we will choose the period because we want to do a summary for the year 2000. So I need to uh, change the starting and the ending date to make sure uh, I just read the results for year 2000. And then after that, I need to choose the variables uh, so in this example, we want to use the sediment yield. So I need to choose that uh, sediment yield and add them to the list. 
Um, because we want to do the summary for the uh, for the sediment yield, so it makes sense. We want to do the uh, yearly mean, so we want to choose that properly in the choose summary there. And then you will have a button called create. So use that button, you can create that uh, uh, map. Uh, it totally take us like uh, three. That no, sorry, uh, seven steps total in total. Um, so in this process, we uh, we will have two softwares you need to use for the process. First one is the SWOT editor. Uh, I mean, uh, somebody may say, oh, it's part of uh, QSWOT, but uh, actually it's like separate software you need to use. And uh, the second one will be the QSWOT here. Uh, in terms of duplicate results file, again, because we use the input to database um, in the input to database function, right? So you still got that duplicate, duplicate database here. So basically, this will have the same data as the one you create in the SWOT model, but it's just in different format. Uh, I will, I, and the total time I use for this process will be one minute. Um, I mean, it's half the time you use uh, for the export, but I mean, it's still long um, if you want to do a lot of anal similar analysis like this. Next, we will see how SWOT Viewer can do the spatial visualization. You can see we will first run the model. And run model is very fast, it's monthly. And then we select sub basin, and select vitamin yield, and select year. And it's done. So with the SWOT Viewer, uh, to do the same uh, spatial visualization, uh, you only need uh, uh, three three step here um, compared to other softwares uh, like XSWOT and Q QSWOT. So first, you just uh, you need to select the sub basin section and then select the outputs. Um, uh, for the opposite, we will select, select the sediment yield, right? And then because we want to do year 2000, we just select year 2000. So that's it. Um, the mod uh, map will be showing in the software. So it, it's very simple, just three steps. And uh, and uh, everything I have done there will be, I uh, just use one software. So I can run the model in the software and I can see do the spatial visualization in the software. I don't need to use other software to switch back forth to um, to use different software. Uh, in terms of uh, duplicate uh, uh, results file here, so there will no duplicate results created in the uh, in the process. So uh, because in SWOT uh, Viewer, we have changed the SWOT model a little bit, changed the uh, output format to the database, so we don't need to generate database file like the one you have done in uh, XSWOT and QSWOT. So, so there is only one result files in that um, uh, folder, so it won't take you extra space for you to store that duplicate files. And we also don't need uh, uh, other like Excel files, CSV files for the data file, everything else is is in the memory, so it's not a file taking your space. And the most best one is the time used for this process in SWOT Viewer is only 10 seconds. I mean, it saves you a lot of time compared with other so, uh, other softwares. So right now, let's do a summary. First, let's look into the. Um, the times has been used in this using this different software here. Uh, you can see I have a chart, uh, graph here showing the time used uh, in this um, used by different software. You can see for Oxford, I use, uh, it take me two minutes, so it's 120 seconds here to use, uh, to do that process. Uh, for QSWOT is better and just take me one minute. And the SWOT viewer view will be the best. It just take me 10 seconds uh, to do that. So you can see you save a lot of time uh, doing the same thing here using SWOT viewer. The second one we will compare uh, the the number of steps you have been used uh, in the process. So it basically the how many clicks the, the number of clicks you will be used in uh, using different software to do the same thing. 
Uh, in Arc Swat, you have six here. Uh, in Q Swat, you have seven steps here. But in Swat Viewer, you only have uh, three clicks. So, still, the Swat Viewer is the best. You only click three times to get the same result. So the last let's look into um, uh, the number of duplicate files has been generated using in this process. Uh, as you can see here in the graph here, the Axwad will generate two duplicate uh, files. One will be the database uh, you import in the Axwad uh, editor and another one will be the Excel file. So we'll have two duplicate files and the QSWAT will be just the one file, it's a database file. And the SWOT viewer uh, is mm, there is no duplicate files in generated by SWOT viewer in the process, so everything uh, is on the fly. And the database file uh, is generated when you run the model; it's not after you run the model. In this video, we talked about how to do SWOT output spatial visualization using XSWOT, QSWOT, and SWOT viewer. It shows that SWOT viewer is much easier to use and take less time and it doesn't create any duplicate files. Hope it could help you using spatial visualization in your own research. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give a thumb up below and subscribe to my channel. I will post videos about SWOT Viewer, SWOT Model and other hydrological models. Hope to see you in next one.